big ABF trucks with our belongings. Our garage, when we moved there, was packed with boxes, and it took me many weeks to put everything away. The children loved to collect things from rocks and Legos and American girl dolls, matchbox cars, and on and on. If you came to our home, you would think we had a normal amount of stuff. But there was no, there was no clutter laying around, but we had way too much stuff. Then one day, we came across the minimalist movie trailer. I showed it to Josiah and Sarah as soon as they finished breakfast. They both walked up to their closets, and they started decluttering. Now, we were homeschooling. They're supposed to be doing school, but that trailer is so powerful. And they were just so inspired to go and, and start cleaning out and getting rid of clutter. It's been a journey. We spend some time, we have spent time and money on things we didn't need. We still have a lot of things. I'm not an expert, but I love helping others catch a vision of something better. Something better in your heart, something better in your mind, something better in your closet, something better in your home. We are not minimalist and we're not perfectly organized, but by God's grace, we do our best to honor God through our home. We are still on the journey towards a pursuit of less, a less cluttered and simplified life. The principles I'll be sharing with you today have been bathed in prayer and many hours of concept development and writing to present to you today. That is my story. So, we are all on the same boat, right? We're all on the same boat. Now, let's go ahead and get started. How does this make you feel? Can everybody see the pictures? It's very important that we see them well. Every corner can see them well? And I'm sorry to our AV people, I do like to move around. So, sorry about that. How does that make you feel? Stressed? How else? Helpless. Very good. Yes. What else? What about this? What about that? How does that make you feel? The same? What about that? Maybe, how does that make you feel? What about that? That's a lot of books, huh? Is that looking inviting in a place where you just want to go and sit down, put your feet up, have something to drink that's healthy, some green juice, and just sit there, relax, and read books? Yes? Is that inviting? Uh-uh. What about that? It's a mess, isn't it? Doesn't it make you feel like that? That was the best picture that I found. It's like, ah, I just, I just can't stand this. Or does it make you feel like you want to hide? Does it make you feel like you want to hide? Yeah. Yeah. Did you know that there are 300,000 items in the average American home? Did you know that the average size of the American home has nearly tripled in size in the last 50 years, okay? So our homes have gotten bigger, not as small as they used to be. Did you know that one out of every 10 Americans rent off-site storage? And did you know that off-site storage is the fastest growing segment of the commercial real estate industry? in the past four decades? Did you know that while 25% of people with two-car garages don't have room to park their cars inside them, and 32% of Americans only have room for one vehicle? So what is the garage? It's a storage facility, right? Is that what, the, what it was meant to be? The United States has upward of 50 thousand storage facilities, more than five times the number of Starbucks. Did you know that? That's a lot of storage facility. Did you know that over the course of our lifetime, we will spend 3,680 hours or 153 days searching for misplaced items? Wow. If I think of my time management workshop on Friday night, that's a lot of time, 
Isn't it? 153 days of your life are going to be spent for items you can't find. Hmm. Did you know that we Americans spend 1.2 trillion annually on non-essential goods? In other words, items that we do not need. The 8 billion home organization industry has more than doubled in size since the early 2000s. Since when? The early 2000s, growing at a staggering rate of 10% each year. That is incredible, the organizing industry. And I am a professional organizer, so I know, and I will talk about, I will talk about getting some stuff, but first we need to talk about decluttering. Did you know that people use only 20% of what they own 80% of the time? 20% of what you own 80% of the time. Clearly, we have too much stuff. Do you agree with that? Do we have too much stuff? Yes, we do. Remember, my stuff could fit in my car, and now I need an ABF. Whoa, that's a lot of stuff. Is there longing in our hearts to have a clean, orderly, and inviting home? Is there a longing? Now, how many of us desire an orderly home? Have you ever been to somebody's home, and you're like in awe, and just wish so much that your home was like theirs? Have you ever been there? All of us have. Are there some secrets to having an orderly home? Well, again, I'm going to be using an acronym, and the acronym is ORDER, O-R-D-E-R, -E and that's what we'll be discussing today. Five simple principles. So what is order? Is the habit of being tidy. The habit of being tidy. Neatness. Simple principles, O-R-D-E-R. O stands for order and cleanliness are the what? The loss of heaven. So they're not just something I'm teaching to you today. These are the loss of heaven. Our High Calling 230, one of my favorite devotionals of Ellen White is Our High Calling. She says this, God loves what? God loves purity, cleanliness, order, and holiness. God requires all his people who lack these qualifications to seek them and never rest until they obtain them. Some people come to me and I say, oh, Raluca, I know your home is like this because, you know, you are an organizer. My home could never be this way. But that's not what she's saying, right? How, how do we grow? So if you are not tidy naturally, God says, seek to be more organized. Seek God and have him help you. Do not rest till you can become more neat, more orderly, more clean. Order and cleanness are the loss of heaven. Let's look at nature and how God created this beautiful world. There is uniformity, yet variety of color and form. This pleasing to the eye and restful to the mind. Let's look at God's order in the universe. Look at all the beautiful planets that he had created, the universe. Look at the ocean and the birds and the clear sky. Look at the majestic mountains and the beautiful coral reefs. And if you have never had an opportunity to snorkel, if God gives you that opportunity, such a beautiful world, the beautiful world of fish and all the creatures in nature, the beautiful butterfly. Oh, it is just so majestic to look at. The rivers and the lakes and the streams of water, the beautiful hills, the flowers, how intricate and gorgeous they are. There is order in nature in the recurring seasons. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, 40, what does it say? Let all things be done, what? Decently and in order. Like this morning, if we all just showed up and tried to eat here and there, there was no order. We wouldn't like it, right? We wouldn't like it if there were no traffic lights and they were like, this car's going this way. There needs to be order, right? And the Bible wants us to think about these things. Let all things be done in decently and in order. Think about the sanctuary. Was it in order? 
God was so specific. I'm going through Exodus and Leviticus and Numbers and all those books in the Bible. And it's just so specific, the instructions that God gave his children with the sacrifices. Now, let's think for a moment in Numbers 24, 1 through 5. Do you remember this story? Tell me the story. What happened? Remember when Balak and Balak went up to, you know, up on the mountain? And what did they do? They looked down, and I paid money for that picture because there was a website, and I wanted to show order. And it just this picture just portrays it so well. Look at the tents of the Israelites. How are they? And Ellen White says this, Balaam saw the vast extent and the perfect arrangement of their camp. Everything bearing the marks of thorough discipline and order. That story alone in the Bible. Remember Jesus? How did he leave his robe when he resurrected? It wasn't just like, throw it out. What did he do? He folded it, right? But the story in Numbers 1 through 5 shows us is the perfect arrangement And then I took another closer look. Look at those tents. I mean, if they had a lot of clutter, do you think their tents would have looked like that? But they were traveling. Did they survive it? Did they have enough to live? Absolutely, right? But they looked down and they saw the perfect arrangements. I wonder if people drove by Seventh-day Adventist homes today, if they could say, wow, that is a Seventh-day Adventist house. Look how neat and clean their yard is, and everything is just beautiful. Review and Herald, June 12, 1855. Those who profess to be converted to God and take upon themselves the name of Christian should be what? The neatest people in the world. Wow. Really? Okay, what does that mean? We need to rely on God's power to help us be orderly Is it once a week, once a month, once a year, maybe even once every five years when we do a big purge? It's daily. It's daily. How do we do it daily? We rely upon God. New habits are hard. And if we don't naturally have it, we need to go ask God, Lord, how can I be more neat? How can I be more tidy for you? Ask him to help you. If you have an accountability friend, say, hey, You know, I'm trying to establish new habits in my life. Would you be my accountability? Let's talk once a week and see how we do. Daily folding your laundry. Don't let this big hurricane happen, right? With just everything is in this drawer. Daily folding your laundry. Daily picking up the mail and going through it. And we'll talk about paper clutter shortly. Daily doing it. Set a timer. Clean up your kitchen. Remember we talked about on the time management, having a timer and say, let's clean up for five minutes. Daily chores, the secret of your success is found what? In your daily routine. Daily routine. Daily washing the dishes and don't leave them there. Success doesn't come from what you do occasionally. It comes from what you do consistently. Consistently. Consistently putting your tools away. When man, when you do a project and you're helping your wife do something in the kitchen or in one of the rooms, and if you leave your tools there, the next time you need it, where do you go? You go to the shop. Where is my screwdriver? And where is the screwdriver? It's back in that bedroom where you fixed the blind or you fixed something, right? So putting your tools away. Daily setting up what is my priority today. Remember, take three a day. Three a day. If you take more than three, then it's just too overwhelming. And you focus on those three. And daily making your your bed. Daily maybe sweeping or vacuuming. And my husband is going to come on now and tell you a little story, a little illustration about making your bed. Is making the bed important every day, Joe? And I know you you did a sermon at our church about it was called, what was the sermon called? It's called make your bed. (laughs) Make your bed. Okay. What? Why Um, is making the bed every day important? Just shortly. My wife, for a long time, was work. She's been very patient with me. We've been married uh, a little over 20 years, and uh, I got to tell you, it's been a slow process because I came from a very disorganized home, 
And so for me to learn organizational skills has been a challenge. But uh, she would always bug me about making the bed. I, ne I was never too interested in it until I saw a talk by um, a Navy admiral who uh, was a Navy SEAL in his younger years. And, um, and he gave a, a uh, actually it was at a Texas University. You may be uh, familiar with this. It's a very famous speech. And it was a very short speech. But he showed all the rigorous things that the Navy SEALs had to go through in their training. But guess what the very first most important thing of their day is as a Navy SEAL? <laughs> to make their bed. And they don't just make their bed like an ordinary bed. They make their bed like precisely. Every corner folded a particular way. You have to be able to bounce a quarter on the bed sheet when it's done. And uh, so that really impressed me. And so I began this habit. And it's and his point is, if you make your bed, at least if you don't accomplish anything else in that day, when you come back home that night to get in your bed, you'll have a feeling of accomplishment that at least you made your bed. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Joe, you know, Ellen White talks about this. You know how Ellen White talks about that you need to let your bed air out? So when we first get up in the morning, we do let our bed air out, maybe when we're having worship. And then we come back and we make it. So it has time. But remember, they didn't wash their stuff as often as we do now. So that's kind of adding on to the making bed. But it gives you that sense of accomplishment, like this is done. Doesn't sort like of a first step of the, the day. The first step because. And then that helps you, leads you into the next steps of accomplishment of that day. Right, because every time we accomplish something, it gives us energy. Have you noticed effort gives more energy? You make the effort, you'll see this door like, oh, I'm going to go do this other door now. You will see when you start decluttering, it's contagious. And you start sharing with other people and you start sharing pictures. It is like it will change your life. It will change your life in such good ways. Now, honey, you need to tell us a little bit about your about this picture, about oh, your car. Okay. What do you do daily? Daily. So um, I traded my three-quarter ton uh, truck for this car to save money, actually, because I do a lot of driving e every week. And uh, th this, you might notice, is a Texas-made vehicle. They can't <laughs> see the picture. So. Can you see it okay? That's a, that's a Tesla Model Y. And um, so uh, I had never bought a new car in my entire life. The most money I ever spent on a car in my life, uh, till just before this car, was $9,000. So <laughs> I'm a mechanic, I don't mind fixing cars. But this one saved me a lot of money when I did the math, so I, I went ahead and got it. And I never had a new car, and I, I noticed that I would clean the car each week, each time after I drove it. And so I thought, you know, I'm gonna time myself and see which way makes more sense. So I timed each day. It took me about seven minutes to keep the car clean each day. And at the end of the week, uh, I'd only spent 35 minutes uh, cleaning the car. And I realized that if I let the dirt build up on the car, uh, it would take me an hour to clean it. And so I, I realized that by keep doing a little bit each day, it actually saved me time each week and it made my car look nicer as well. Thank you so much for sharing that, Joe. Yes, the daily habits. Don't put things down, put them away. My philosophy is if I touch this, I'm going to touch it once. I'm not going to put it here, and then a few hours later, I still see it there, and it's just like, why is this still here? It needs to go where to its home, right? So don't put things down. Put them away. Put them away. Later is the best friend of clutter. Okay. How many of you have ever moved? Raise your hand. Okay. How many of you had a miscellaneous box when you're moving? You just didn't know where something belonged, and you poof, miscellaneous. I don't know where this belongs, miscellaneous. And when you got to your new place, how many boxes of miscellaneous did you have? How many boxes of miscellaneous items did you have? One? I think somebody mentioned one time they had six or seven. That's a lot of miscellaneous. What does that show? that we postponed it. We said we will do it later. I, I, you know, I just have to get it packing now, right? What happens if we don't do things daily? Danny, you come back. What happens if we don't, if we neglect to do daily things? 
So this, this was my area of expertise. <laughs> Growing up, my mom was a real estate agent. She was a teacher first, then a real estate agent. My dad worked for the uh, Bureau of Mines. Uh, we lived there in Colorado on 63 acres. And um, we had chickens, ducks, geese, horses, a pet porcupine, a pet deer at one point. I mean, we had a zoo and snakes as well. My mom was a biology major at Colorado University. So we had all kinds of interesting animals and things to do. Needless to say, we were very busy. And so what ended up happening was things would pile up, pile up, pile up, and then once a month or so, we would go into this great, I would call it, excavation of the house and just tear everything apart and try to clean everything up. And for a few days, we had a beautifully cleaned home. But it ended up kind of that same cycle again where things would kind of fall apart during the month or so. And what would have happened, Joe, if you did what you are doing to your Tesla now? <laughs> if you would have done a little bit every day, would there be an excavating Yeah, I think time? it would have definitely been a much more efficient because, like you say, a lot of times we were looking for things that were lost in our great It's 153 mess. days in your <laughs> lifetime, right? If you add it all up, that's a lot of time, right? Yeah. That we can be using for God and for the benefit of others. Thank you so much for sharing that. So that's what happened. If we neglect the daily things to do, we will have to excavate. Do you guys want to excavate? And kind of, this was kind of like a small excavating, but just imagine that your whole house. That's a lot, right? Six simple principles. So order and cleanliness are the what? The laws of heaven. Rely on God's power to help you be orderly. When? Daily. D stands for decluttering never ends, which is on this earth. Till Jesus comes, we're going to be decluttering. And why is that? Because stuff always comes in. Think of your mail. How much comes in every day, right? This is the quote that actually got me going on this subject. You know how the God just like, I, I studied theology. I did my master's in biblical counseling. And I always saw myself doing, you know, ministry for God. But really, to teach decluttering, I'm like, Lord, okay. And when I read this quote, and I did a workshop at our church last February, and the Lord really blessed, we had our whole, we had no, we had no room. We had between 80 and 90 people that showed up, some from the community, and I did this workshop that you have here today. And this is the quote that changed my life regarding decluttering. Let's read it together. It is now, it is now that our brethren should be cutting down their possessions instead of increasing them. We are about to move to a better country, even a heavenly. Then let us not be dwellers upon the earth, but be getting things into as compact a compass as possible. That, if there's one thing I want to leave with you today, is that God is calling all of us to be cutting down our possessions. Time is short. If we keep accumulating, what's going to happen? It's like, we are so comfortable here. Do we really want to go to heaven? I still remember Dr. Cherney coming to our home, and, and um, we were going down, hiking down in the neighborhood, and there were these beautiful, big, majestic houses. And he's like, I wonder if those people want to go to heaven. They're so comfortable here, you know? And it just spoke to my heart that I should be ready and willing to leave my house, to leave my car, to leave my computer, to leave my hangar and my airplane any day. I should be able, if God says, you remember how she, she talks about how God will show when it's time to sell our properties, when it's time to sell things so that we can give the money to the work? I wonder if that time is now. And God will show each one of you when that is. But the call is that we need to be cutting down, cutting down our possession into getting things into as compact a compass as possible. I am still studying that because I don't know what Ellen White meant by this. But when I look at a compass, you know, it just shows limit, right? So don't, you know, in your range, within your range, you need things to, to eat, you need things to live, but excuse me, getting them as compact as possible. Have you ever rented an Airbnb or 
a condo when you went to Disney World. I don't know if any of you do that, but I know people come to Orlando to go do Disney World and they rent a you know, vacation rental, right? How many things do you have in the vacation rental when you get there? You probably have a suitcase, right? And then they provide you with dishes and spoons and glasses and pots and pans. Are you okay? Are you still alive from living with that little few things? You're still here, right? So that means you survived your vacation, but with very few things, right? So why do we need two blenders? Why do we need more than however many plates we need? As a matter of fact, Joshua Becker only has, I think, I think he says eight. He has eight plates. And if he has more than eight people to his house, he uses paper. That's all he has. He Joshua Becker is a, a powerful man of God that's really promoting simplicity. And I will tell you his story for a few moments. He was cleaning his garage one day, and his five-year-old son really wanted his attention. You know, have you seen little boys that just want to be with daddy? But he said, my garage is in such a mess, I need to take all Sunday to clean it out. He was excavating, right? His postponed decisions that filled up the garage, right? And his son is kind of begging, he's helping a little bit, but he's getting bored. And, Dad, I want to go in the backyard and play baseball. Please, Dad, please, whatever. And he's still cleaning, he's still decluttering his garage. And then the neighbor comes over. And he says, hey, how's it going? What are you doing? Oh, I'm cleaning my garage. And she says something that changed Joshua's life. He said, you know, that's why my daughter became a minimalist. And he's like, what's a minimalist? So they finished talking, and he goes into his house, to the computer, typed in, minimalist. And he starts, all this stuff comes down, with all this stuff about minimalism. And he's like, wow, this is amazing. So he decided to start minimalizing. So he got rid of like 60 to 80% of their possessions. They sold their house in Vermont, moved to Arizona, bought the smallest house in the neighborhood. Like you see his house, it's all these big houses. Anyway, for real estate, they say to buy the smallest house in the neighborhood anyway, but he bought it for space. And you look at his kitchen, all the countertops are all clear. They just have enough, kind of like this, just enough to live, right? Nothing extra. Decluttering makes the home look, feel, and function better. Focus on purging rather than organizing. Why? Ask yourself the question, how would my life be better with less? How would my life be better with less? You know, organizing is kind of like putting a Band-Aid on something that needs stitching. Have you ever tried to organize a space and it just didn't work after a week or two? It's still cluttery and it's still like, it just doesn't work. And you go back and you buy more organizer. You go to the container store or you go to Target or you go to Walmart or you go to any of these stores and you buy more organizer. I, I just need to invest in more. Have you been there, done that? I have. Because it's like putting a Band-Aid in its stitching. You need to purge first. And then when you purge and you have less things, then it's a joy to organize. And it stays organized. Getting, did you know that the National, National Soap and Detergent Association said getting rid of clutter would eliminate how much of the housework? 40% in the average home. What? If I get rid of clutter... That means that I have to do less housework. How many of you enjoy doing housework all the time? No. Do you like the picture on the left or the picture on the right? They still have enough towels. They still have everything. So what kind of questions do I ask when you are decluttering? Number one question, do I use this regularly? Do I use this regularly? Two questions. Do I have something else that could serve the same purpose? Do I use it regularly? Do I have something else that could serve the same purpose? And number three question, would I buy it again if I didn't own it already? Would I buy it again? So remember these three questions when you are decluttering. Do I use this regularly? So I'm going to make it simple for you. And I will share with you an example. However, let's talk a little bit about two methods of decluttering, okay? And I'm not sure which one you like, 
but I will go ahead and go over it. Okay. So when she came here, and I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time with her name. Is her name? Yasti came and decluttered here for us. What did she do? Did she do the method, the number one method or the number two method? She did number two. So she didn't take the whole drawer and dumped it because that makes a lot of mess. And let's say while she was decluttering, while she was decluttering, she didn't have time to finish. So she leaves, and, and of course, this is hard because we're not in a home, but if she did the second method, she should have taken this, and what else? There was something else to do with party and gift wrapping. So this could be party or gift wrapping. It depends if you have a gift wrapping section or a party section. You take those items as you're decluttering them and you put them away as you're doing it. Does it make sense? Now, if you didn't do that and you just have the whole drawer here and you have to go do something else when you came home, there's this huge project there. Does that make you feel overwhelmed? And it's like you don't want to do it, right? And so it depends which method you like. So if you want to pull everything out, at least make categories. Let's say this is donation. This is my donation box, right? Then I have the trash. Then I have a quarantine box. Now let me talk to you a little bit about quarantine. How many of you enjoy quarantine during COVID? No, we didn't like it, right? Well. Somebody liked it, okay, maybe you had time to do home projects, right? What does it mean to put something in quarantine? Okay, so let's say, okay, this is an ice, a ice maker. I'll give this as an example. Okay, what am I going to do with this? You know, I really sh probably should donate it, but what about if I do a picnic this year? You know, I really don't want to go out and buy a new one, so I probably should put in quarantine. So I get a box and I'll put quarantine. And I put items in this box and I put a date. I'm going to, you know, look at it in six months. And if you haven't needed anything in it, you take it right to Goodwill. Don't open it and don't look at it because you're going to want to keep everything. So the quarantine is for you to give it away, right? Have you done that where you just, oh, I forgot I had this. Oh, I need it now. And they could be stuff, but what I also... If you want to go that far, you can also take an inventory if it's something you do need, but God will bring it back to your mind. So you may want to keep it for six months. If not, it goes away. Um, let's say you're going to can, but you are not quite sure if you're going to do it yet, but you don't want to, this is brand new. You don't want to just get rid of it because you might need it. You may get inspired to can this year. So go ahead and keep in the quarantine box and then get rid of it six months later if you haven't can't. Because a, a lot of times we keep things for too long and really we think we're going to use them and we don't. Actually, uh, one of the people that I, um, that I listened to, she said that if something is less than $20, she doesn't keep it. If it's less than $20 to buy again, you can go to Goodwill probably and get one of these for $0.50 cents or a dollar. Or I just don't know what your prices are in Texas, but you know, something like that doesn't cost, or the Dollar Tree, if it's something that you really need. So the two methods, so trash, keep, donate, sell. Now, let's talk about selling. If there's something that you want to sell, let's say this is a collectible, I don't, okay, let's say this mirror is collectible, okay, and you can, you know, you can go to eBay and say, you know what, and this is not a good illustration because it's not, but let's say it is. So you go to eBay and you put in, um, and it has a name of something that, let's say, sells on eBay for $200. You don't want to donate this to Goodwill. You want to sell it on eBay. But you know what I have found? If you don't do it that moment and you put it somewhere, oh, I will do this later, it may never happen. So if you want to sell something, do it on the spot. Go there. Or if you want to go through a drawer and find more items to sell or Facebook Marketplace or offer up or Craigslist, have all your items ready, finish the project, have all the items ready and get on and put it. And if it doesn't sell within, let's say a week or two, it's time to let go. Have you noticed that a lot of us think that a lot of our stuff is valuable, but then nobody would pay a penny for it, right? And so that's kind of discouraging. But at the same time, there are some items that are valuable. So we do have to be assertive, we have to be prayerful and ask God if there's something to alert us. If we're in, in tune with God, he will teach you. 
what you should get rid of and what you should donate. And you know what? If I don't need this one, somebody else will. Why does it need to stay in my house and clutter up my cabinets in the kitchen? I already have one in the ice, um, in the refrigerator. I don't need it, right? So let it go and let somebody who needs it use it. So how many of you like number one method? How many of you are one of those people that like to dump and work? Okay, very good. What about those of you who want to do a little bit at a time, go into a space and put things away? Very good. Excellent. Your home is what? A living space, not a storage facility. Let's read it together. Uh, my house is, not a, is a living space, not a storage facility. If something is not being used, it's time to let it go to somebody who needs it. Joshua Becker says, if you're not using the stuff in your home, get rid of it. You are not going to start using it by shoving it in a closet. Yes or no? Are you going to use it if it's shoved in your closet? Yes or no? No. Okay. There's a TED Talk called How Many Towels Do You Need or something like that. Okay, let's talk about towels. How many towels do you need? Maybe two, right? Because you need one in case it gets you know, dirty and you don't have time to wash it, you should have two. But do you need more than two towels? I mean, I know people that have two, three, four linen closets filled with towels for the whole community, right? <laughs> do we need that many towels? We need two. Now, we have, my husband, I have one towel. I have two towels. My husband has two towels. I think Josiah has one. If he needs one, he can take mine that's, you know, clean. And then upstairs, we have a guest room because we love hospitality and we host people. We have friends coming tonight. When we get to Florida, we have a friend coming to visit. And so I have towels there for about five people, five to six. Sometimes people come with their children. But that's all you need to have. So if I have an emergency and my towels, let's say the washing machine broke and I need more than two towels, I can go borrow from the guest room, right? So... Do we need that much? Our society, our culture is teaching us that we need more. They are trying to sell us. Look at all the advertisements. You need to buy this and you need to be that. And then we clutter our homes with all these things, right? The truth is we can live with a lot less than we think we can. I have not died. I have two towels and I'm still alive and I'm still clean. I still take showers every day, right? We can live with a lot less than society tells us we should. You need this. This will make your life better. Really? Take a pause. Think about it. Do I really need it? Christmas decorations. I've been wanting to get rid of my Christmas decorations for years, but my son and my daughter for a while wanted to make Christmas special. So we, I, I had, well, Somebody passed away in Colorado, and they were throwing away all these beautiful Christmas decorations. And so we took some of that. What was the lady at the bottom of the, of the bottom of the, yeah, so we took a lot of her stuff. And then anyway, we have four boxes, and I think this year I went to three. And then when my son is ready to say, no more Christmas, I can't wait for the day. But we have enough, and we do have a tree. We have enough. And so the question is, do I use this regularly? I do. I use it regularly at Christmas time. Do I have something else that could serve the same purpose? So every year after I decorate for Christmas, I go through my stuff and purge more. You know, I didn't use it this year. Do you think I'll use it again? If it's something you think you've used in the last two years for this specific, this is a specific Christmas decor, fall decor, then keep it. If not, it's time to let go. Is there something else that would serve that purpose? Probably not. Would I buy it again? If it's the, all the answers are no, then it's time to let go. Clutter is nothing more than postponed decisions. You just don't want to make a decision about it, and you just put it again in the closet. You just put it again in your garage. You just put it again in that. You are doing, sh or have you done this where I just don't know what to do about this. I'll just put it over here. I don't know what to do about this. I'll put it over here. And it's like stuff shifting. You are stuff shifting from one room to the other because you just can't make a decision about it, right? Two questions. Is this useful? Is this beautiful? 
Now, when you look at this picture on the left and on the right, the people on the left, do you think they have to excavate now? They have to excavate. That's a lot of boxes. And look at that beautiful room. They could use it for a guest room and show hospitality. Instead, what is it? It's a storage facility with stuff that probably haven't touched for two, three, four, five years. People, wow. Really? What do I need that? What is it good for our garages? And I will share with you my friend's Jasmine's story. Where is the pictures on the right more appealing? Do, have those people been decluttering? Yes. And they have books. And what is easy to see, easy to use, easy to read. And the nice then is not clutter. It has a few things on it. Purge things and decide what to donate, keep, or sell. And do it after the season. You are about to enter spring season. This is the time to go through your closet. I had a friend at church and her whole closet came down. Because she just, you keep buying. And you're buying and then you say, I have nothing to wear. I have nothing to wear. Why? Because you haven't planned your wardrobe. Planning your wardrobe. What do you need in your kitchen? Make a list. Do I need five waffle makers or can two do it? Do I need ten spatulas? How many spatulas do we need? My drawer for all the stuff I use in the kitchen is tiny. My family can tell you this. I have maybe two or three of this and that's it. I can wash it and use it again. I don't need to keep ten, right? When donating or sell it, do it quickly. Have you, have you like got into this excitement to purge your house, right? And you start having all this stuff to go to goodwill and your husband comes home. And he goes right for those boxes you are trying to declutter. Honey, you are getting rid of this. Oh, no, you shouldn't. And what happens? Here goes the item back into your house. But... If you go to Goodwill really quickly and he doesn't see, and it's your stuff, okay? Don't, yes, don't get rid of, because that's another whole issue. Then we, I have to get my master's of biblical counseling out, and we'll need to have a session about husband and wife, right? Because I have to let go of my husband's shop. That is his space, and I can't go there, and I have to put blinders on. It's not that bad, but it is Okay. And I actually helped my husband, Josiah, and I. Josiah, thankfully, got the organizing gene in him, and he's a minimalist. You should see his room and drawers. They're very good. But Josiah helped uh, my husband, and we helped my husband and his garage. One section of the garage looks amazing, and he loves it. He said, this is so great. And so we hope to go back and finish. So get what? Don't get rid of your husband's. That's his space. And you know what? Pray pray. If your husband likes to collect things, don't allow this for the enemy to come in and split you apart for over stuff. You can just nicely say, hey, I, I, took, I took this workshop on decluttering and I'm really inspired. Would you work with me? Would you work 10, 15 minutes a day? We can declutter together. You declutter your space, I declutter my space. And make it fun, like a party. Hey, let's go do that and then let's go to dinner at the end of the week. Make it a date, you know, and then instead of pulling you apart, you will bring it together like a family. We are going to have a decluttering party, 10, 15 minutes a day. E stands for evaluate and adjust the organizing systems you set up. Regularly decluttering. Now, I have brought a box. Okay, so when you go to a place like this, guess what some people want to do? They want to leave here as soon as they leave, and they're going to head for Target or Walmart to buy bins because they are inspired and they want to organize. My advice to you is to use stuff that you already have. This is a box that I brought here with those pins that I gave you. If anyone didn't get one, I do have more. And what I will do is I will cut it, and then I will go, I will have this as my organizing. See that? It's a box. That, that's a nice box. It can go into a drawer and I can organize pens or pencils or paper or even in the kitchen and use what you have without going out and spending money. Let me tell you why. If you go out and remember how the organizing business is growing 10% a year because people are like inspired. They see these Pinterest pictures and they think, 
I want my house and my pantry to look just like this. But the truth is you'll be spending so much of your money doing that. My recommendation is to declutter first, purge, and then live with that space with cardboard. Because you haven't invested any money. You can just, once, you know, when you go to the grocery store, you can use um, little boxes that your products come in. Live with it for a while. Is this how much I want to keep? Because you may keep, let's say, 10 spatulas, but then you decide, you know, that's too much. I can do with fives, right? So you want to have a space for five because then you may be able to fit next to it your can opener. You may be able to fit in your lemon squeezer. Do you know what I'm saying? So live with the space for a while, and then you go out. And when you invest, make sure you measure. You measure. In my purse, I have a little tiny tape measure that I take with me everywhere. Measure. Look in this picture. What did they use? They used cardboard to put their probably underwear or socks away. Didn't cost any money, right? Now, the question is, does every item in your home have a home? Where does this go? This is soap. Do you have a place? That stores soaps. Probably it's in your bathroom cabinet, right? And it goes there, and then you see it. You open it up, and let's say you have three. You know that you're not going to need it right away. So you may want to wait another month, depends how much usage, and then you buy soap later. So you don't overbuy, right? Home where it makes most sense. Don't put your pots and pans in the bathroom cabinet, right? You know, we want to put the home of each item needs to be where it's most, where it most makes sense, where you will be easy to get, easy to put away. Minimalism doesn't mean always tidy. It means what? Easily tidied. My house is not perfect enough, but if I know somebody's coming over in five minutes, I can get it to look very orderly, right? Because I'm a human too. My house does get messy, but I'm sure my husband will say no, but to me it does. Now, we needed to buy or a, fr a freezer. And by the way, maybe you like the chest freezers, but I had them and it didn't work very well for me because I couldn't get to the stuff. You will get to the bottom. It's made for meat eaters because, you know, you just put the same stuff in the whole chest freezer. So I wanted to get an upright freezer so I can see my broccoli and I can see my um, peas and I can see my corn, right? And so when I was looking for one, the question, do I use this regularly? Yes, I use my freezer every day when I'm home, right? Do I have something else that could save it? No, in Florida, we need an extra freezer in the garage because, and a refrigerator. Would I buy it again? Yes. So though it's yes, go ahead and purchase it. If it's no, no. I had a bread machine on the left and I have a KitchenAid. Do I use this regularly? Actually, I gave it away because I didn't use it regularly. Question, the first question, no, here goes, Psh, out the door. Do I have something else? Yes, I have a kitchen made because I can make four loaves. With this other one, only one loaf. Would I buy it again? If I use it, I wouldn't. I wouldn't buy this bread machine, so I gave it away. Now, let's talk about paper clutter. Wow. How many of you love paper? We love paper, right? So we still want paper in our life, right? So I have struggled with paper for years. As a matter of fact, I had... And my husband and I went to this commercial warehouse where they had all these office supplies for very good prices. And we bought like two cabinets. And I had all this paper, all these different files. I was a uh, ministry development team at the church that time and primary leader. And I had all this church work and I had it all filed. And then I start getting into more decluttering. And I thought, I can't do this anymore. So I got rid of most of it. What I did, I took pictures or I scanned it. And now I have it on my phone so I can still access it and print it if I needed it. And then I just got one small with two drawers. One is for my husband, one is for me. And that's where we keep like property, important papers, and so forth. Now, my sister-in-law, Jan, is paperless. The only paper they have is their uh, passport, passports, deeds of their homes, and probably marriage certificate, and she was in France a while back, and she got a letter from IRS. 
And she said, we need documents for this property, whatever. My sister-in-law went to her phone, went to documents. Within five minutes of that email arriving in her inbox, she had a letter back to IRS because she had it with her. Otherwise, she or she was in France having vacation, was so worried about IRS contacting her, but because she had her paper in her documents and she has backups, she was able to send it right away. I haven't arrived to that yet. I still have paper, so I have four categories. I have a homeschool category, which is about to be done because my son finished his GED and he's in flight school now. And I have one for personal, one for church, because I still do church work, and one for, I don't have my glasses and I can't see, um, but another category, whatever category. And I put them all together and I sort items the same. I streamline each category, I store them together, and then I purge once a week, once a month, and once quarterly. And if possible to go paperless with a lot of your bills, do it. Like all your, if you have a credit card and you use that to get points or whatever, use, you know, Take advantage, and they have it all here. So now I don't have all this mail coming in the mail. I went paperless, and so I can still seal my bill online, and it just makes such a difference in my life. Hooks. I love hooks because hooks, you don't have to fall. I don't know about you, but I, it drove me crazy to take my towel and have to fold it and put it on the on the rack. And this way, I just have hooks. They're easy to put away, easy to take out. So I love, I prefer hooks much better. Pegboards. Pegboards in your garage. In, and I'll show you what I did with a pegboard. This is from Ikea, the one on the right. And in your closet, make sure your clothes all face the same direction and they're all the same. If there's something I would encourage you to do, just doing that it makes your closet look so much orderly to have the same kind of hangers and buy your hangers somewhere that will still make that because like two, three years from now, you need extra. And I would say buy 10 to 12 extra ones in case you need them for your coats or something that you may have in a different closet that you're going to bring back to your master closet. Just make sure you have the same type of, of um, hangers. It just makes such a difference. I store my Tupperware together. I don't put the, because that's just more work for me. So when I need something, boom, I pick it out, put the leftovers in, and put it away. Over-the-door organizers. If you need more room in your kitchen, if your kitchen is small, over-the-door organizers are fantastic. Lazy Susans in the corners makes easy accessibility. And tiered for your spices or cans. The principle is easy to get out, easy to put away. If it isn't like that, declutter till it becomes like that. So it's easy for you. Have a tape measure with you. Measure the drawer. If you're going to go out and you're already decluttered and you already lived with the space for a while and you definitely need some organizers, make sure you measure. R, resist filling a space with more than it can contain. Could this have contained all that stuff that was coming to here? She probably wasn't able to close it, right? Because it was so filled. Now look, it contains just enough so you can close it. Resist filling it because only store the essential and eliminate the rest. Declutter till it stays in control. One in, one out. You buy a new dress, it's time for one to go out. You buy a pair of shoes, it's time for one to go out. I have a friend, she, I forgot. I think she has over a hundred pairs of shoes. That's a lot of shoes. And so Hopefully, she was inspired by the decluttering and did some of that. Stop over-purchasing. When your space is decluttered, it will be much easier for you not to over-purchase. I, I was helping my sister in Romania one summer, and she kept buy, buying sponges because she had them all over in different parts of her house. And so when I helped her, I put them all together, and she realized she had so many dish sponges to last probably for two, three years because she kept buying them, right? But if there's in one space that you see that's easy accessible, then you will know what you own and you will not overpurchase. A limit, so set the limit. This is where I'm going to keep my sponges and if they don't fit anymore, then I need to give some away to somebody who needs them, right? Don't feel bad. You know, take it to a pet shelter and Donate it or a friend who is in need. So set a limit. This is where my shoes are going to fit and no more. That means I can't buy any more and I'm going to be content with what I have. 
you can keep you can keep anything you just can't keep everything you don't need more space you need less stuff how many of us is oh we need to go get another shed we need to go you know expand our house you do not need more space we need less stuff think about going to a tiny home if you were moving to a tiny home what would you take with you that's all you need to survive you are not going to die if you only have five spatulas right because god is the source of life right and stuff does not make you happy you think it may but it doesn't jesus makes you happen jesus fills our space it's not our homes our closet our purses our dresses so only take what it can fit in the space how about getting captivated with sentimental items ooh isn't that a hard one so if space is the limit it's a limit for each category let's say somebody you love passes away and they want to give you a rocking chair so what are you going to say if you have space for it bring it on i would love to have it i'll treasure it if you don't have the space what is the answer what good is it going to do if you put it in the attic what good is it going to do if you put it in the garage just because it's sentimental is there something else about that person that's smaller maybe it's a picture of them that will bring you that memory that will help you treasure but do i really need the rocking chair what about a set of dishes my cupboard is full of dishes already do i need it maybe somebody else in the family that maybe just got married could use it or somebody that is connected with them could use it what about collections if that's the space you have enjoy it if it's something that brings you joy but limit it. Don't go rent storage facility or get a shed for it. Does it make sense? So decide the space for it, assign it to that space, and that's all you can have. And then if more comes, then you have to decide, do I like this new stuff better than the old stuff? And make room for it. So you have to get rid of something. You have to make decisions. Don't postpone the decision because that's why we get to that first picture. It's because we postpone and then stuff continues to accumulate what about keepsake box sure i have a keepsake box and i have kept some of the artwork from sarah and josiah and when i'm going to make it a priority because remember right now i don't have time is not what we say it's not a priority right now i plan to digitize it and that's what i want to talk to you about next how about a scanning party okay i have a lot of pictures and where are they right now they're in album in my laundry in my linen closet at the bottom i probably have five six beautiful albums of pictures of us getting married from my in-laws and so forth so this is what i'm planning to do and encourage you to do the same ask god maybe you can sell some of the items that you have laying around in your garage in your basement upstairs in a closet sell it get some money from that and buy a high quality photo scanner how many of you struggle with pictures pictures like you have a lot of pictures okay how about a good photo high quality high megapixel scanner don't shouldn't be too big okay and you have a scanning party you tell your friends hey guys can you come over i want to have a scanning party and you start scanning all your favorite pictures not all of them you have to make decisions again what you keep and what not keep and then you tell your family for christmas next year i want all of you to pull together and get me a high quality picture frame and then you are going to take all those boxes from your linen closet that are albums that once in a while you look at and you're going to digitize them and you're going to put it in your living room in your kitchen when you're cooking you're going to see pictures of your mom when she was doing an activity with you that you treasure you're going to see pictures of your aunt that you miss so much you're going to think of the spiritual lessons god taught you at this one retreat that you took a picture with and you get to enjoy it instead of having somewhere in a closet unuseful right only once in a while you go through it you get to enjoy it daily and recount the beautiful and let god speak to your heart about all the beautiful memories resource list earth911.com if you have hazardous materials that you want to get rid of in your shop download an app you can unsubscribe from all your mailing lists right now i decluttered this my house this is i have all my apps one page 
and a little tiny bit. This is it. And on my page, I can see clearly if I have an email, if I have a text message, and they're in categories. So I don't have pages and pages of apps, and I never, and it gets cluttered. Digital decluttering too, right? Not just physical clutter. Pet shelters, take cleaners. Like if you, let's say you wanted to use more natural cleaners, but you still have some of the regular ones, you may want to donate them to pet shelters because they could use those. USPS, um, when my father-in-law died, we requested to be removed from all the, uh, the mass mailing list, and our mail has got way down. And when my mail comes in, remember I showed you the picture of my paper clutter? I go, right, it either gets filed there, so I need to take care of it, I need to pay the bill, or I need to respond to a request, a donation request, whatever, or it goes in the trash. Either gets filed to take care of it, or it goes in the trash. There's no piles of mail, because or it gets filed if it's a property tax document that I need, or scanned, if you use a scanner for your documents. So digital declutter, we talked about that. Now... How many of you have been inspired to go home and declutter? Okay, so I'm going to ask my friend Karen to come on up, and we have a special folder that we made for you, and it has the five principles that I just shared with you there, and we're going to do an activity now because we want to hear from you, okay? So the question is for you. Would you like to be a part of a WhatsApp group? I have created one in Florida, and I have people on it, and we encourage each other decluttering. And when you see pictures, I'm going to share with you more pictures, it's going to inspire you. And you have somebody to share with, and you feel like you're part of a community. And so Karen is going to take your name down. It needs to be WhatsApp. You're going to get this. You don't have to take a picture. You are getting it in your folder. Yeah. And I want to say a big thank you to Karen I tell you, I have worked, and somebody was saying, oh, this is the first. No, I used to do seminars in other topics. This is one of my first ones in this subject, right? And so from all the people I've ever worked with, Karen was a delight. I'm just so grateful for her hard work behind the scenes, such a godly woman of God, and I'm just so privileged. Karen, thank you, thank you, thank you. And all the women from the women's ministry that have come and have cooked and made muffins and potatoes, and, and thank you so much. Thank you for giving me such a wonderful welcome. And I just hope that this just inspires you to, um, to just... Continue in your pursuit of less. Less clutter, less of the world, and more of Jesus. So that's the decluttering challenge. So let's go ahead and go through your folder now. Okay, let's open. Everyone has a folder. Let's open it together. So let me introduce what is in it, okay? So on the front page, what does it say? Time to declutter so you can welcome. So why do we do these workshops? Because we want to declutter our homes so we can have host people, right? So you're not embarrassed for your home anymore, right? Also, we want to understand the pursuit of less. So we are not so busy, even with ministry, that we don't have time to take care of our homes and our children, our families. Does it make sense? So we want to make sure that we balance everything in a way that is according to God's word. Okay, then you open it up. On the left is a place to take notes, and we'll be discussing that shortly. And on the right, it's a lady that I love. A slob comes clean. This lady was a slob, and God, God helped her so much. And she has a website. I mean, I don't even know if she recognizes God, but I think God helped her. And so she has the three layers of a clean house. And then uh, the, after that, you will see 101 things to get rid of. And just start with that. Go through that list and see what you can get rid of. And then there is the decluttering challenge. So we start tomorrow. We start tomorrow because you don't want to, as a matter of fact, I had people in the workshop in my church, they went home that day. And they were like furious. I said, I am tired of dealing with clutter and my life feeling so disorganized. I want, by God's grace, to bring more order into my mind, into my body, into my mind. So we're going to start that and we'll take your names down. Make sure you download WhatsApp because that's where you can put pictures. So maybe you can have a sign-up sheet. Other resources, the slob comes clean. Take, tackle one small task a day. Don't go and try to organize your house today. You are going to get discouraged. 
but go home and do something that will take you a short time. Take the smallest drawer. What about that miscellaneous drawer that, you know, everything goes in? You know what I'm talking about? Do that one today. And just take one item at a time and put it away wherever it belongs. If it stays in that drawer, maybe get some of these little boxes and start organizing it with it. And see what needs to stay in there. And then you move to the next one. This is my pantry that I worked on and some spices, just ideas. Uh, I like clear and I have all my grains and um, cans. This is my spices and on the right is our supplements. We have um, bog repellent and charcoal and I just recently did that. This is my friend's garage. On the left, this is how it looked before and on the right, this is what it looks like now and she struggled. This is the garage. She was my friend, her kitchen is excellent order and she had a really time with the garage and I kept reminding her, come on Jasmine, when is the time for that garage? She kept postponing it and you know what? She got inspired and did it. This is just one corner. You should see some of the rest. It's amazing. This is my little sewing corner on the left. It was before. And what I did to organize it on the right. And I went to Ikea and I put my scissors. I just want to have thread and buttons and safety pins. They are just ready to go. Easy to access. Easy to what? To put away. So my husband needs to sew something. He can just go to this, use it, put it back. Very easy to see. Is it cluttered? It's just enough. I don't need any more to sew. I do have a, Sarah has a sewing machine, so she does have some more stuff for her sewing machine. But this is for our everyday iron-on patches, whatever you need to fix. This is our church. Uh, this is a picture before in this room. Look at the, on the right. We have this cabinet and file cabinet and just... And we were just working on a new cabinet. And this is now, this is our evangelism room that I redid. And this is with um, Ikea. If you're not familiar with Ikea, it's a great place. And we put it all together. And this is our evangelism room where people can go in and get their items. Where do I start? On the left of the folder is where you will start. We'll take five minutes for that. Quiet. And then I'm going to have three people to come and share. And then we're going to do the gifts, pray, and that's it for today, okay? So let's go ahead and take five minutes. Where are you going to start? And you've got to start today or tomorrow. Do not procrastinate starting this process. It is so exciting. And my friend Karen is going to bring a sign-up sheet. And we do not want... Okay, right there, right at the exit. If you want to be part of the decluttering challenge, please sign up. And you'll be able to share pictures. It's perfect, yes. We need your phone numbers and, and your phone number on WhatsApp. Okay, five minutes. Please, let's see where you're going to start. And then we're going to have you come and share. Think small. Something you can tackle and have success so you are energized to do more. Joe, oh, would you mind helping us move that closer? Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, right, right here. Three minutes left.
Okay, how are we doing? Thank you, praise God, praise God. Make sure you sign up at the back. Okay, now what about traveling? Should you be, how many of you travel with at least one big suitcase? Most of us, right? Well, if, if you do and if you, my husband and I, we, you know, we travel non-rev, which means we go on a very discounted rate. So we go to Europe with actually a suitcase that's smaller than your carry-on because some of the European Carriers are very um, strict about their luggage. So we've learned to travel with very, very small things. And even this trip, we just came with a carry-on and my backpack with the computer. But I will highly recommend packing cubes. They can serve as your like dresser. So like right here, and I categorize that to these are my PJs. This is something I'm gonna change my jeans to fly back to Florida. And so I encourage you to get packing cubes uh, for your travel. It just makes it so much more um, decluttering, you declutter first, right? And then when you're ready to do the organizing system, I will highly recommend that. So we want to hear from you. Now let's do a couple door prizes first. We have a couple questions for you, and then we'll have you come out and share. And those of you who want to come share, what about if you just line up right here? And short, what project you're going to do, and if you're excited to do it, okay? But let's do a couple of prizes. Did anyone give away an article of clothing this week? Raise your hand. All right, Yay, come on over. Woo, and get a you already started decluttering. Yes, go get a gift. Yes. Yes, a gift for you on the table. And it's the kind of gift that are, doesn't clutter up more, right, Kieran? And these are not gifts to add more clutter to your lives. That's They're just right. items that may help in your cleaning um, or organizing. How about, did anyone give a pair of shoes away? Yeah. That Please. counts. Yay. That counts. Sarah, I saw your hand too. Come on over. Yes. Whoever gave a pair of shoes away this week. Good. Please, please go have a gift. Yes. Yes. You can do the next one. You can do the next one. One more question. Did anyone donate any unused item at all this past week? <laughs> yes. It's riding around in your car still. <laughs> Drive straight to Goodwill. <laughs> if, you, if anyone donated any kind of unused item and donated it this week, come on over and get a prize. You can do more. You can do more that way. Yes, yeah, something useful. Look at that. You got some soap. Yay, that's awesome. Great. Oh, you got some organizing. See, you're ready to go. And the reason we keep them open, so it's something that you can use instead of having it in the bag. I found that if we just put a ribbon, it still makes it special for you. We thought of you. Miss Karen has been wrapping them up. But it's something that you can see if you can be useful to you. Did anyone cancel an appointment to be here today? Did you hear the question? Go ahead and Any, repeat it. Anyone cancel an appointment to be here? You canceled sleeping in? Sure. <laughs> That's an appointment with yourself. Did you? But you came here. Yes, you deserve a gift. Please have one. Maybe somebody could help our sister. Yeah, you don't have to take it. Good, good choice. Yes, she would like a gift. Maybe take her two, three to choose from. Is Donna still here? She's not still here? Okay. I was going to say, she was the first person at the church today. Okay. So she definitely deserves a prize. Yes, but... the first person at the church today yeah. deserves a gift. Okay. What else? Did anyone paint anything, touch up anything, and tidy something in that way in your house this past week? Paint. Did anybody paint this week? Yes? <laughs> to make their home more beautiful? No painting, huh? Okay.
Yeah, she'll go ahead. You can finish them up. Yeah. How many more do we have over here? Uh, quite a bit. I'm running out of questions. Who did I already ask this? Who organized a drawer? Yeah, no, we have anybody organized that a drawer this week? Good. Please. Yes. Good. Excellent. Did anyone organize a little bit in a garage this week? Anyone organize in a garage this week? That counts, sure. And then washed windows. Yeah, How about washed windows? Anybody wash some windows? Victor washed windows? Come on, Victor. Okay. What about... Hmm, it will probably be the whole group... Okay, let's wait. Let's wait for the next one. Let's see who's going to come and share. Come on. We need three people. Please, please, please. Come on. I want to hear. Yes, please, Laura. Laura? Is it Laura? Yes, Laura. Come on. I want to hear from you guys. What are you planning to organize? Yes, where are you going to start? Um, the only room in my house that overwhelms me is my son's room. <laughs> Because you walk in, you can't even walk. The floor is covered in Legos. And like every time we clean it, within probably a day or two, it's just covered in Legos. <laughs> but he's inspired, right? And you're going to go tackle it, right? One so corner at a time. I think we're going to... My idea is to build some like custom shelves for all his Lego sets. So he doesn't have to get rid of them. He just needs to like have a place to put them. Sounds good. You may want to check Ikea too. Okay. For being the first person to come up and share, she gets her own quarantine tote. Yay! Woo! That's awesome. That's good. Anybody else? Yes. Um, so this week I organized a bookshelf. Uh, I'm a homeschool mom and I love books a lot. Um, so I get old books that are old. So I was able to categorize them with like nature and religion and um, kids books and then gardening section and it just looks so pretty and it makes me very happy looking at it so um, I take all the books that's so beautiful you know you're gonna find that when you do that you are gonna want to go back have you ever done that when you organize something and you just like you show the whole family right and then every time you go by it you open that drawer wow and then you go to something else and I have to look again. And you open it again. Because it just shows you how much we all love order. How God created us to be. Because God is a God of order. And his creatures are a God of order. We crave that, right? And when you start experiencing it, you're going to see such freedom. And it will make your life so much more organized. You feel in control. I mean, God is in control. But you feel as human that you are... You can keep it under control, the clutter that's coming in. Anybody else? One more. Yes. Please come on up. Thank you so much. And those of you that shared, you get to go to the table as well. Yes. Thank you. I was intrigued by your travel cubes. I have um, a history of the last 30 years traveling on every country of the world except Antarctica. And tra those suitcases, they get rummaged through Every time you go through uh, another country, you have to go through customs and everything's a mess. And I'm very fascinated with looking up where, what these are. I like the transparent ones where I can put inside, I'm a physician, and I don't want the bandages scattered throughout my suitcase by these people going in customs. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have more than 10 of one thing, so you must be going to sell it. But I still have to put it together. That's the order I want. When I arrive, I want all my medicines and everything all organized. And so I was very fascinated with her comments. I want to explore how I can do better. Ebacks, thank you so much for sharing that. And you know, the traveling is going to be a whole class on its own, how to travel light and how to, I would love to teach that class someday when the Lord opens that. Maybe I'll come back here. Thank you for sharing. I had some to share. And my husband is so an this airline is, pilot. This is a secret because she, she would be upset that the, the bench that she helped me organize in, in my garage 
we got all the tools nicely displayed on the wall so they all have a place and got the bench uh, top completely empty. Well, over the last week or two, it started piling up again. So secretly, before we came here, I went in there and decluttered my workbench. Thank you. <laughs> so that's so happy confession that. is good for the soul, right? Yes, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. Ten Commandments of Clutter. Yes, Ten Commandments of Clutter. Let's read them together. Thou shall stop procrastinating. Thou shall quit what? Making excuses. Thou shall use it or lose it. Thou shall learn to let it go. Thou shall be a giver. Thou shall set limits. This is all I can have. Thou shall use the in and out inventory rule. Thou shall believe less is more. Thou shall keep everything in place. Thou shall compromise. You know, sometimes your husband wants to keep something. Don't let that become a fight, right? All about our persons at our home should be what? Neat and attractive. Adventist Home 22. Neat and attractive. None should be so fearful of being like the world that it will lead them to be careless in their houses, living things in disorder and uncleanliness. It is not pride to be neat in dress, cleanly in person, orderly and tasteful in their household arrangement. That's another class I want to do on decoration and on on decor and redesign. Thank you for attending. Now, let me share with you a video if you want to follow me. My son has been begging for me to have a YouTube channel, and I want to share with you the only video I have that he made for me. It's a short. You ready? I think it will work, the audio. We'll see. Uh-oh. I don't know how to make it bigger, just that. So it's it's a little video that my son made. I'm sorry, it's very small because um, I uh, didn't have the audio. Sorry about that. But um, that was a little video. I couldn't find an organizing system for my kids. And so God gave me the idea, and I went to the store, and I got the few things I needed, and I made a little video. It's a short. It's a very small one. Just to give you ideas, organizing is so much fun once you decluttered. So the first is to cut down our possessions. The Lord is coming soon. We can't take anything to heaven, guys, except our characters. Wouldn't that be wonderful to have less clutter so we can focus more on our character and being in, in tune with God, spending more time with him, not having to do 40% more housework, right? Because if we cut down the possessions, we'll have 40% less work. Wouldn't that be wonderful to spend that time in connecting with each other, in witnessing, in evangelizing, in worshiping God, in having devotions, in exercising? Wouldn't that be wonderful? So that's my prayer for you. I just hope you feel challenged and inspired. And we have a few more gifts, and then we'll pray. So I've run out of questions, but I know that we've given a lot of gifts away this weekend. If you have not received one yet, please go over and take something with you on your way. Let's give Raluca and Joe and Josiah um, a round of applause just to Praise say God. thank you. Praise God. 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 Very much appreciated you coming. Have you been blessed? Praise God. Been blessed. Praise God. Um, let's just close with prayer and pray that God gives them safe travels back home today. Father, thank you so much for the words we've heard today, the things that you convicted us about in our minds. Lord, we do believe you're coming as soon. Help us align our lives uh, with the fact that this world is not our home and we're taking nothing with us. Um, we pray for safe travels, a safe flight for Raluca and her family today, and um, that they'll just be back home and ready to receive um, their guests this evening with hospitality and uh, give them the rest that they need for mind and body. Thank you, Lord, for each person here and get them all home safely too, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want to say thank you to Karen also to add on our characters we take to heaven and people, right? The people we influence. So think about using that 40% to invest in other people.